everyone if you're new to my channel welcome if you're not new well welcome back thank you for joining me this week don't worry I'm not driving and you being I, I got you all set up on a phone mount that I legally got you know it's all good but I decided I needed to do a video just kind of there's been so much going on in my life and there's been a lot but one thing that like I kind of put back in the forefront of my mind because there's been so much craziness is um, my Turner syndrome and I guess it kind of really hit me yesterday how much like that diagnosis and all the infertility -ness that comes along with it really does affect me um because you know i've been so focused on so much else that i just haven't had time to really even think about that um well not as much as i used to um because it used to be something that especially since coming back from florida consumed my mind a lot because a lot of people i know um, whether through social media, um, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, in my personal life, I know quite a few people who either are pregnant, um, just had a kid, um, you know, there's a lot, and at least in my personal life, I don't know about anybody else, and it just kind of been playing with me, and it's been affecting me since I've been home, and you know, in a better state of mind, but this last month with everything that's been going on, it's kind of not, I guess it's kind of been to the back burner because I've been so preoccupied with my mom and dad and everything that happened with my best friend and it's just been like crazy. And, but yesterday we were, we went to a luau and afterwards we went to pick up, uh, a few odd ends that I needed um, because I needed like two things so we stopped at Walmart real quick on the way home to grab the two odd end things I had ran out that morning while baking and we were passing it, the clothing sections and of course we class you know the women's the men's and then we got to the you know kids and then to the babies and it just kind of really hit me and like for some reason I got this overwhelming just heart ache like it was I, I kid you not like I could feel it in the depths of my soul this ache and it just I started tearing up and it wasn't like a full blown cry but I legitly started getting a few tears in my eyes and I don't I don't know like obviously like I had it affect me a handful of times passing like the baby section and like going in there um, especially when I had to go get something for like a friend that's having a baby or someone I know that I have to send a baby gift to you know um, so it's just like so it's not like it hasn't happened before by any means but it hasn't happened in a hot minute um, where I just all of a sudden, just by looking at the section, like I just felt my stomach drop, my heart just ache, like it ached just right in my chest and tears started welling up. I started kind of getting that little bit of claustrophobic feeling, like I can't breathe. And... I think people don't understand how much infertility affects somebody and I think that's one thing that I especially want to work on with awareness is I know myself it affects me a crap ton and then I know so many women that it's actually not as uncommon as I thought when I was younger my naive 16 year old self who was diagnosed with Turner syndrome thought I was a one in a million person, but there's way more people who not only, well, Turner syndrome obviously isn't the only cause of infertility, obviously. So like, it just really hit me 
Like there's so many people that we don't even realize that are dealing with infertility. And it's actually astounding how many women and men, because men have to deal with being sterile and infertility. And there are some men who are the reason that they, that them and their spouse can't have a kid biologically, like naturally. Um, so it's not obviously just women, you know, that deal with this. Um, so it's just, it's crazy to think how many are out there and then how honestly, shockingly, little it's talked about with infertility and how how that damages someone. Like I was a 16 year old who was diagnosed with Turner syndrome and told I would not be able to biologically have a kid and it damaged me. It affected me. Like I turned heavy into my eating disorder and started acting in some seriously life threatening behaviors. And I know a lot of women um, because obviously women are the ones that more talk about it because men don't really, the men that know about the infertility issue don't really come forward as much. But like, I know a lot of women that they just, it just, it hurts. They feel pathetic. They feel broken. They feel, they feel. And obviously this is more personal toward me, but I have talked to a few and seen a few that they just feel like a disappointment. Like something's wrong with them fundamentally because they can't biologically have a kid. Like they were so, like, cause from the age of like five in elementary school, when we first learned about periods and stuff, like and puberty, like we're told the main reason the main difference between men and women, the sex, the biological sex, is one can have kids and one cannot have kids. Like, you know, one, well, one can carry, I guess, I guess not have kids, but carry the kid. Like, women get pregnant, carry the kid, and give birth. Men can biologically, the, the biological sex of men cannot get pregnant. And that is, and so like for a lot of women who find out that they can't do that, they feel honestly just like something's wrong with them. And obviously it's not their fault. It's not, like for me, it's just a bad dealt hand with my infertility that I cannot have a kid. But so, but for many years I blamed myself. I blamed myself. Like, I didn't even acknowledge I had Turner Syndrome and really deal with it until about six years after I was diagnosed. It was about five years after I was diagnosed. In 2021, when I went to Florida for residential treatment for my anorexia, um, that is when I finally bit the bullet and started acknowledging for real, I had Turner Syndrome and had to take medication and had to get help for it and figure out a game plan for my health and my long-term fertility journey, and fertility journey, what I wanted. From the from 2016, was it 2000? No, it was longer than that. Oh my gosh, 2016, goodness gracious. So I was 16 when I was diagnosed. And I don't even remember how old I would have been. I graduated in high school, it would probably been around 14. So it's probably about seven years. When, from when I was diagnosed at the age of 16, I was about 25. Now I was about 24 when I finally started. So it was about eight years when I finally started admitting something was wrong. Like I was, I have this diagnosis. So with all those years, I just blamed myself that I'm broken, I'm disgusting, and punished my body with my eating disorder. And obviously not all women that have infertility punish themselves with an eating disorder, but a lot of them blame themselves and just get down on themselves and just feel like crap. And that can lead to depression, that can lead to just a lot of issues mentally, and then that can cause physical stuff too. Um, so I really think it's important to start talking about how infertility is a, such a big thing, especially with all the stuff about 
abortions and all that in the news lately, it's really important to talk about infertility and how big of an issue it is for many women and men and how much how much heartbreak and issues and just problems it causes and how and to spread awareness um so that's just kind of a little soapbox personal moment um sorry just had to get that out there because last night just really hit me um but thank you for watching if you're dealing with infertility i am here with you we are not we are not fighting this battle alone you are loved you are not broken and thank you all for watching. Please subscribe and have a lovely day.